to start streaming. What's that? Praise the Lord. It's time to begin our Bible study tonight. I'd like to welcome each and every one back to the house of the Lord, back to Bible study. Uh, whether you're here or whether you're in uh, Facebook land, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Reverend Berga, sir, would you please stand and pray over the Bible study and ask the Lord's blessings tonight. All right, don't forget church service tomorrow morning at uh, 7.30. That's 7.30, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. 7.30 is a little early uh, for the morning, for the morning service anyways. 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Looking forward to all uh, that uh, that God is going to do. Right now we're toying with uh, uh, 
uh, with a verse of scripture, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And uh, looking at maybe the idea that if we only knew what we wanted, if we only knew what we wanted, and I think all of us know what we want, uh, sometimes we have a hard time believing that it is possible, but with the Lord all things are possible. All right, and so we might take the uh, take it a little bit out of context. All right, um, with that we'll, we'll just see what the Lord wants to do there and whatever. But tonight we are studying in Colossians chapter two, and let me just read the verses that we're going to be focusing on tonight. Whether we get all the way through these five verses or not, we'll see. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And so tonight we're going to be looking at verses 6 through 10 of Colossians chapter 2. And in the verses of chapter 2 uh, that we are going to be looking at tonight, taking a closer look at, there's some very interesting things that we learn concerning the new life or concerning the life that we have been given in Christ. Remember, Christianity is not just uh, something we do. It's a real experience. It is a life-changing experience. It is a life-receiving experience. All right? This life is received the moment we get saved. In that moment, our life changes completely. In verses 6 through 7, if one wants to take a closer look at what Paul is actually teaching in these two verses, they would learn that the Christian life is one that is essentially progressive or a life that is always advancing. Progressive means moving forward, progressing advancing. The reason for this is found in the law that governs the existence of the Christian life. A law that involves a perpetual active increase. If it does not grow or if it did not grow it would cease to live. The law that governs the life of a Christian is the law of love. When a person stops loving, love dies. And we see that. We see that in the natural world. In the natural world, there is a lack of love. It is possible to live life and not know what love is. And the reason why it is possible to live life without knowing what love really is is because God is love. And not everybody knows God. Not everybody has met him. And so their definition of love is of this world, which is, you know, sometimes up, sometimes down. Sometimes in, sometimes out. Sometimes never even existed. All right? But in Christ, it is completely different. The reason for this is found in the law that governs the existence of the life of the Christian, a law that involves a perpetual active increase, for if it did not grow, it would cease to live. The law that governs the life of a Christian is the law of love. And when love is not allowed to grow, it dies or ceases to live. When love is not allowed to grow, and there are many, many ways in which love is not allowed to grow. That's why we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. We need to keep our eyes on Him who is love. When we get our eyes off of Him, when we get our eyes on the things of this world, 
it is easy for love to stop growing. It's easy to get our heart filled with what's going on in this world and so on and so on. Let's go on. In the natural world, the world without Christ in it, there comes a point where life becomes stationary. In other words, we cease to grow. And then begins to decline and ultimately fades away. But in the life of the Christian, every provision is made for the unceasing expansion in the highest moral excellencies. In other words, the Christian is always moving forward. And there's a reason for this. We're going to get into it. All right. In other words, if the law of God, the law of love is active in our life. And that's, that's the thing. Is that law active or is it inactive? If it is active in our life, with the passing of each and every day, the Christian man or woman is becoming more and more like Jesus. We are becoming more and more like Jesus. Let's look at it. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. The word walk expresses the general conduct of man and the process of progression. Moving forward. We move forward how? By taking one step at a time. Walking. Now we can, we can move backwards too. A little harder to move backwards than it is to move forward. Alright? Especially if you don't know what's behind you because you know you don't know what's behind you. The next step you take, you might be laying flat on your back. You know what I'm saying? The word walk expresses the general conduct of man and the process of progression in the formation of individual character. We're always growing. You know, when a child begins to walk, something is happening in his body. What is it? He is becoming stronger. His muscles are being, or her muscles are being exercised. They are becoming stronger. And before they walk, uh, they actually are strengthening themselves up by, you know, by doing, they're constantly kind of, you know, man, if I did that long enough, my muscles will cramp real quickly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And whatever, but, all right. These words that are written here in these two verses. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. These words are to those who have received Christ. He's not just speaking to one group of people. He's speaking to all them who have received Christ. Who are they? Those that have received Him. Let's look. take a look at who they are. We learn from God's Word that those that are able to receive Him or be received of Him, really that's what is, is more what takes place. We are received of Him. The moment we allow Him into our heart, the moment we acknowledge His Lordship, He receives us. And we become His. But they that receive Him are who? The Bible lets us know in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 who they are. They come out of every kindred. A kindred is what? Kind. Alright? What it means here is every race. All races of people can be in Him. It says, come out of kindred, tongue, or language. 
the different dialects within certain races or kinds. You know, you can, you, you can, you know, if, if in other words, what, 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 what the Word of God here is doing is it is confirming to you and I that no one is left out. Jesus died for all men. He died for all of us. And so here, tongue means language, the different dialects within a certain race or kind. You know, men are, are, are the ones that separate us. Remember, remember in the Old Testament, there was a story in, uh, about, uh, and, and they were asked to speak a certain word. And the certain word, the, the pronunciation of it, basically was the separation. If you said it one way, then you were killed. <laughs> if you said it the right way, then you were part of that kindred. You were part of that group. You know what I'm saying? It's man that, that, that separates us by language or race. God doesn't do it. He, went, he goes on to say, people. All right? Let's just look at the verse of Scripture that I'm looking at. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Here, the word people means those of one's own population. Meaning like us here in America. Where we may not be purebred. I may not be like Paul the Apostle. A Jew of the Jews. You know what I'm saying? A Benjamite. You know, proud of his uh, pure uh, lineage. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I have no idea what's inside of me. I know one thing. Uh, it's probably pretty well mixed. You know what I'm saying? All right. And really all of us are pretty well mixed. Uh, you know, just because of wars and things like that that have, have taken men all around the world, even just trade. Back in, the, back in the old days, trade, when men came from one part of the world to another part of the world and, and they got off that boat for a long time and, and whatever. And because of sin, they... They, 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 they had intercourse with a person of that part of the world and, and all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, so uh, because of sin, really, all of us are kind of mixed with uh, a little different this and that and whatever, so, all right? But that's what he's saying here, people. People of our own population. Meaning like us here in America where many of us have many races in us. And then the last description was nation. Anyone not of Jewish descent is men here. God or Jesus died for all of us. He died for everyone. Every human being. Every kind of people. So let's go on. As many as received him are to walk in him. To walk in him implies a recognition of him in all things. In everything that constitutes our daily life, the way we do business, we are to do it like He does it. How did Jesus do His business? He did His business as God Himself did. He didn't do it half-hearted. He didn't do it halfway. There's not one single person that Jesus uh, ever did just a halfway miracle in. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't just... Uh, fix uh, half the problem. You know, you got you got five broken bones. He doesn't fix this two and a half of them. You know what I'm saying? He fixes the whole deal. All right. In everything that constitutes our daily life, the way we do business, we are to do it the way He would do it. That's what it means to walk in Him. The way we love those of our own family. We are to do it the way Christ would do it. The way we live our life in the community ought to be done the way Christ did it. This is the answer. 
This is the answer for the United States of America. This is the answer for this whole community here. This is the answer for the whole world. The answer for the whole world is to what? Let Christ live in us. If we would let Christ live in us, I guarantee you there would be a lot less problems in the world. You know what I'm saying? How do I know that? Because the moment I let Jesus into my life, there became a lot less problems in my life. You know what I'm saying? Because I was oftentimes the self-originator of my own problems. By my own attitude. You know what I'm saying? As a man sows, so shall he also reap. And when you sow a bad attitude, guess what? You're going to reap a bad attitude. You sow to the wind, you're going to reap the whirlwind. You know what I'm saying? You, you, <laughs> and so nothing changes really until our attitude changes. When our attitude changes, our world changes. And God can help us with our attitude. How do I know? He helped me. All right? The way we live our life in the community ought to be done the way Christ did. How did he do it? How did Christ live his life in the community he lived in? Well, we look to the Bible. He went about in Acts chapter whatever. I don't think I might have done it. But here, let me just wrote, write, read what I wrote down here. The way, the way Christ did it, how did he do it? He went about doing good. His whole reason for living was to show the world something. Was to show the world how uh, we really could be the victor of our own destiny. The master of our own destiny. He went about doing good. When uh, he was smitten, he didn't smite back. When he was railed upon, he didn't rail back. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Every ounce of oppression in the world is of Satan. It comes from lies that he tells. Lies like, God doesn't care about you. God doesn't care about me. There is no God. You know what I'm saying? Lies. That, 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 that distort the truth of who God is. That's why it's important that we have a relationship. We really meet Him. Because the moment you meet Him, the first thing that you find up, out about Him is that He is love. All of a sudden, the night I got saved, I was able to love people that weren't like me. Because something real and wonderful took place in my life. Let's go on. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Man, what a blessing to know tonight that God is with us. God is with us. And what that means is that we can have the right attitude. And I'm laughing because yesterday somebody pulled out in front of me I mean, it was, it was everything I could do to not hit this guy, you know what I'm saying, with my vehicle. That's how, and, and, uh, and everything inside of me wanted to do something that wasn't necessarily Christian-like, you know what I'm saying? And so I had to pray because uh, I, I was thinking about just ramming my car right into his, and, 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 and then, you know, that was the old man. That's the old man, you know what I'm saying? That's that old bad attitude coming out. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, had, to, I had to do something. And uh, at right. least, at least I, 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 I did something that I would regret. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I believe in living life without regrets. But there are some things, uh, some things that I don't want to regret. You know what I'm saying? There are some things I don't want to regret because of a lack of self-discipline. Or lack of love, or lack of mercy, or lack of compassion, or lack of uh, of grace. You know what I'm saying? There are times when I need, I absolutely need the grace of God. 
God, I need your mercy right now, God. I need your because God, without your mercy in my heart and in my mind, <clears throat> God, my 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 thoughts, my thoughts right now are unmerciful thoughts towards somebody else. And I know that's not what God wants. And so, God, I need your mercy so I could be merciful. You know what I'm saying? Jesus hated no man. He loved them all the way to death. And he loves them today. This is what we're supposed to be in him. We are to be the light of the world. The light of what? The light of God's love. The light of God's goodness. The, the light of God's morality. What is God's morality tonight? Does anybody know what God's morality is? Sister Sewell? Righteousness. Okay. That's correct. There's another, another word. God's morality is... It's a little bit... A little bit more definitive is holiness, purity, pure morality. That's it, pure, pure morality. In him is no sin, no wickedness, no sinful thought, no lust of the flesh, no lust of the eyes, no pride of life. In him is what? Just pure uh, morality. And it's easy to fall in love with that because it thinks no ill of its neighbor. You know what I'm saying? It has no ill will. It's not planning a, a, a trick. You know what I'm saying? It's not laying. It doesn't lay a trap. It doesn't sneak into, into houses to, you know, take its pleasure. God's uh, holiness is his moral purity. And that's what God wants in our life. And what a blessing tonight to be able to do it. Amen. He loved them all the way to death. He loves them today. This is what we are supposed to be in Him. He was forgiving. Again, speaking about what we are to be in Him. He was forgiving. The Bible says in Luke chapter 23, and There were also two other malefactors led with Him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. Hanging on a cross in absolute pain, unjustly, unjustly found guilty of nothing other than what? Loving God and loving you and me. That's all he was found guilty of. That's all he was really guilty of. He didn't break the law. He had no reason to be put to death except for what? The world hated him. The world could not abide him because of his moral purity. The world could not abide him because his light was too bright. The light shined in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, his, his truth. The, the world didn't want his truth. And so the world killed him. Well, they thought that he killed They, they killed him. They didn't really kill him. He surrendered to death. He didn't have to die. All right. In fact, he could not have died until he did something for them that despitefully used him. He took their sin from them. The very hatred that they were displaying toward him. He took it upon himself. He became it. And it was judged by God. Worthy of death. And he died in their place. But before he died in their place he said what? Father forgive them. For they know not what they do. Alright. And then they cast lots for him. They, they gambled his clothes away. They gambled his livelihood away. You know what I'm saying? That's how little they thought of him. And 
I, this is the rest of it. And the people, just, just real quickly, I was kind of, we can skip this part. This is just the rest of that. I just added it in for emphasis, all right? Uh, let me just read it. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them. They derided him. They derided him. Saying, he saved others, he himself, or let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers other also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of Jews, save thyself. And a superscription was also written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Look at him. Naked. Weak. Broken. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us also. He didn't have to do what he did. But he knew if he didn't, none of them would have hope. None of us here tonight would have any hope either. Because there is no hope outside of Jesus. All right, let's go on. Christ was forgiving, so are we to be also. This is the problem in the world without Jesus. Without Christ, it is much harder to forgive. Even with Christ in our life, there are times when forgiving someone is hard. If you're married, you know what I'm talking about. All right, anyways, that's fun. Even with Christ in our life, there are times when forgiving someone is hard, but because of his presence in our life, he helps us to be able to do it. The reason for this again goes back to what we said at the beginning of the Bible study tonight. The law that governs the life of the true Christian, the law of love, the law of God's love, is that which what? Helps us to what? Continue to become more and more and more like Him. In other words, we never stop growing. The life that we have in Christ is one of endlessness. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't reach an age where it says, okay, now, you know, there's not, not, not you know, we, we, not until we see him face to face. Then up there, there won't be any more need to grow. You know what I'm saying? Up there, will we, will we, will we, 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 we will be perfected. Up there, we will be just like him. Our knowledge will be perfect up there. The goal that we must set for our life is to get there. Not everybody gets there. They that get there are those who choose to go. And that's what we're going to be doing. You can have what you want if you only know what it is you want. A lot of people don't know what they want. And so they stand in the valley of decision. Oh man, now, see now I'm, I'm getting ready to, I'm putting my outline together right now. So let me just go on. <laughs> We walk in Christ when we realize that we belong to Him and our life consists in serving Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19-20 What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? I don't have a right to tell God what I'm going to do with my life. My mother, one time, and, and, and I'm getting ready to wrap it up here, my mother said, well, why don't you come up here one time many years ago? She said, why don't you come up here and start a church? I said, Mom, you know I can't do that. I said, when I joined the Army, uh, I didn't join the Army to tell the Army where to send me. The Army doesn't send me where I want to go. The Army sends me where it wants me to go. You know what I'm saying? I have no right to tell God what I'm going to do with my life. God is the owner of my life. He's the one who gave me life. He gave us all life. This is where man, this is the struggle. The man, this is the struggle with man and God. God wants to be God. He wants to be the Lord. He wants to be kind of the director of our life. And all we have to do is what? Man, you know, just get in His perfect will for our life and God will bless it. God will lay it up. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord or of the Lord. God knows what He's doing. And he can do a lot better job at, 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 uh, with our life than we can. You know what I'm saying? How do I know? I know. 
Because when I had it all to myself, I made a mess of it, right? All right. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Therefore, for whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. The best of everything we possess should be cheerfully offered to Him. What do we possess? What is it that we really have that God wants? Our money? No. Our worldly goods? God doesn't want our worldly goods. What's He going to do with them? There's only one thing that is ours, and that is our life. The seconds, the minutes, the hours, the days, the weeks, the years, and the months. The best of those should be cheerfully offered to Him. Amen. So we learn from the Word of God that Jesus is above all others. He is the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Every knee bows before Him. Therefore, when we are walking in Him, we are walking in exemplifying everything that he is that gives him his position. Everything that gave him his position where he is at right now, he gives it to us also. There is no one that loves like he loves. There is no one that cares like he cares. There is none more compassionate than he. This is our example. This is what we're supposed to be doing with our life. This is, and this is exactly what the world needs. The world needs the voice of light and love, not darkness. Light and love. Cheerfulness. He died not for his friends, but for those that hated him. We read how that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. That's why we are to walk in Him. So that everywhere we go, the world sees Him in us. Now I know, I know that the world is not going to receive Him. All right? But that doesn't mean that we are... We, we've been relieved of our responsibility to walk in Him. The world needs what you have. This community right here needs what you have. Your family, my family, our families need what we have. What do we have in Christ? We have in Christ a reality of all uh, that we can be. A reality of God, a reality of love. We know what love is. We know what love is. Love isn't a feeling. Love is an action. It's something we do. All right? And we do it whether it's reciprocated back or not. I don't love you because you love me. You know what I'm saying? God didn't love me because I loved him. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. It really is quite the opposite. We love him because he first loved us. All right? So tonight, tonight, I hope that the Bible study, I mean, I, 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 I could have added so much more. All right? There was so much more. All right? But I, I, I wanted to, I was hoping we'd even finish about 10 minutes ago, but we didn't. So, all right? God is good. I'm glad to walk in him. I'm glad to be able to do it. And I'm glad to know that I'm tonight that I'm part of this family. I'm glad tonight to know I'm on my way to heaven with people just like you here tonight. Amen. There's only one thing, one thing I desire tonight. That's to pack this church out with people just like us here. People just like us. Show them the reality of God. Show them the love of God. Show them the goodness. And there's something better to live for than what's out there in the world. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. God, we ask that you would have your way. Help them to forgive me for being a little long tonight. Accomplish your will in all of our lives. Draw us closer to you. In the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus, for your glory. Amen and amen. Tonight.
Well, the love of God, let the love of God be with you. We'll see you in the morning, 11 o'clock. Bring a friend. Let's pack this place. What about social distancing? Well, we'll practice social distancing too. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but one of these days, that wall is going to have to come down. You know what I'm saying? If we're going to get back to life, you know what I'm saying? But we'll do it when the time is right. And, uh, that, that then, uh, yeah, yeah, so, all right. Anyways, I'm glad tonight that whether we live or whether we die, we live and we die unto him. What can separate us, Brother Whip? What can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Death can't do it. Life can't do it. Principalities and powers can't do it. Nothing is able to do it. And so we just want to live our life the way God wants us to live it. Amen. Have a good rest of your night tonight. We'll see you in the morning. All right. Are there any questions concerning the Bible study tonight? All right. Very good. Very good. All right. Hey, good night. God bless you, folks. We love you. Appreciate you guys. Hoorah. All right. Hoorah, Mike. All right, bud. Bless you, bud. Okay. Good night.